Good morning. My name is Derek Brown, and I want to talk to you a bit this morning about the notion of equality. God created people to be equal in essence, that is, in terms of who we are. God also created people to be different in function, that's in terms of what we do. So we're created equal in essence, who we are. We're created to be different in function. That's what we do. Now our world gets these ideas twisted. Let me, let me talk about that a little bit. In our world, people are conveniently treated equally with respect to function. Let me break that down. See, if I see us as being equal in function, and I'm your boss, then I never have to realize or acknowledge that there are things that you can do that I cannot do. Never have to respect that because we're equal. I've got a job. You've got a job. My job is to make sure that you do your job. Now, people are also conveniently treated unequally with respect to essence. It's exactly opposite how it should be. See, if I give little regard or respect to who you are, then I never have to realize or acknowledge that I am treating you improperly. Never have to change that because I don't even know that. I don't know who you are. Now another interesting twist is that equality in our society has been redefined as simply the opportunity to function. If I give you the opportunity to do for me, then I don't need to give you anything else. And that subtly preserves the advantages created by disparities in our society. And it also preserves this little game, this game that twists what should be with what is. Now, this message is not about lamenting what is. It is what it is. But I'm here to call it what it is and to talk to you about making it what it should be because the onus to do so is on us. We're the only people that we have the capacity to change. Equality depends on the opportunity to function, to do, but it depends even more on creating circumstances that allow us to be, to be the fullness of who God created us to be and to bring that to our function. To address opportunity while ignoring circumstance presents an illusion of equality that satisfies most of this world, but it denies all of us a significant growth opportunity. Now, desire for security, the illusion of security, also protects the illusion of equality because we don't want to rock that boat and drown ourselves. I get that. Now, if I could put this in an equation, I'd say that equality is equal to opportunity and circumstance, but it depends much more on circumstance than opportunity, as indicated by the equation I'm presenting here. I'm giving an analogy. The way equality is handled in this world has allowed us to enter what is a very long race. Let's say the race is a hundred laps. We've now been allowed to enter the race, but most of the racers, if you will, have already completed 20 laps before we've started. Now there's some good news there, there's some bad news. Let's go with the bad news first. We're behind. And we're going to have to risk short-term security to catch up. But the good news is we can catch up. We can catch up by always being prepared for opportunity and by creating favorable circumstances ourselves. Now, if we can't find those favorable circumstances out there in other folks' companies and organizations, then we need to create our own. We need to fellowship with each other. Now, let's talk about how to create those favorable circumstances for a while. We've got to create the sincere, supportive, purposeful culture 
that we want, the one that allows us to thrive, instead of the wayward and oppressive one that we have. Uh, let me present some verses that uh, illustrate how we do that. First one is, the race is not to the swift, but to the ones who maintain. So stay aligned on your grind and stay in your own lane. What am I saying? I'm saying start where you are. Influence your circle and then expand it. That's what I'm saying. Second verse. Don't despise the small tasks. Pursue them diligently. Passion and purpose are often discovered through acts of ministry. What am I saying? I'm saying humble yourself. Take small risks that serve people. Rinse and repeat. Next verse. Keep it slow and steady. That's it. Nice and smooth. Always do your homework. Believe that God approves. What am I saying? I'm saying be patient and keep learning. Keep applying yourself. Keep pushing. Keep striving. And hang in there. Last verse. All money ain't good money. Sometimes less is more. Make a living through your giving. Learn to turn two into four. What am I saying? I'm saying begin to wean yourself from corporate welfare by stirring up your own gifts and passions in service of people in ways that create multiple revenue streams. The process is simple, but the path is an arduous one. And it just requires you to decide to be better and not bitter and to move. Now I have a unique role in creating these favorable circumstances of which I speak. I am the equalizer. I speak, live, and breathe this approach that I have laid out here. Much like the protagonist from the 1980s CBS drama. I have a special set of skills acquired over a long career that allow me to speak a calm, confident truth in love and to speak simple, coherent solutions to complex problems. I have an ability to read, write, count, lead, create, and think with wise and skillful use of resources, interests, communication, and expertise. I have learned how to be powerful in this world, though it is not what God may have created it to be. I have learned how to be powerful nonetheless. Now, generating the kind of power that I'm talking about facilitates the American dream for many and the American nightmare for more than a few. Please understand. Be that as it may, those folks will be all right. And we're going to be all right. Because guys and ladies, power is not granted to those who deny, but it's generated by those who supply solutions to the problems of our existing state. Thank you for listening, y'all. And go out there and be powerful and be equalizers. And let's do it together. Thank you.